normally the toughest decision you have to make when you're programming an FM sound is what kind of mod matrix are you going to set up? And you can do what I've done in the last few examples and just do it completely from random. You can go in here and you can use one of these presets. This is oftentimes what I will do. And the C and the M here are corresponding to carriers and modulators. So for example, if we had two carriers and four modulators, they give you 16 different options there. And if I go and grab this one, we can actually follow along and see what's happening here. In this case, we have F and E being our carriers. Those are what are actually outputting signal. And then the frequency modulation is all happening here to E, where you have D going into E, C going into E, B going into E, and A going into B. So really, this one's giving you like two levels of modulation. Not only is A influencing B, but then B is influencing E. The final thing you can do is you can actually load up an image and you can just search like FM algorithms DX7. And this will give you a bunch of different block diagram algorithms that you can use and emulate inside of the FM8. So for example, let's say that we're going for number, ooh, I don't know. There's so many, so many good options here. Why don't we go with number seven? Okay, that one looks kind of complicated, but really it's not complicated at all. What we have to do first though is figure out like what's corresponding to number one. So we'll have A be number one and then B2, C3, etc. So with number seven, one and three are acting as our um, carriers here. Okay, so I turn on one and three. Those are our carriers. That's what's going to be outputting sound. And this example, 2, is going to modulate 1. So I turn on 2. 2 modulates 1. Frequency modulation. Boom. We're good to go. On the other side, we have here 3 is being modulated by 4. So we'll turn on 4. That's modulating 3. And then we also have 5 modulating 3. So we'll turn on number 5. And that's going to modulate number 3. And then we have number 6 modulating number 5. Like so. And also a little bit of self-modulation happening here modulating itself all right and so you can see just like that this would be us mimicking that particular um, algorithm inside of the dx7 so just to review on the left one is a carrier three is a carrier one is being frequency modulated by two three is being frequency modulated by four and by five with then five getting some special treatment here from six, which also has the option to uh, self-modulate. Okay, we'll compare that to number 15. We'll start over so you can see the difference here. Again, it has one and three being our carrier signals. And we'll just go ahead and start by setting that up. No problem. We have two modulating one, and two is also able to modulate itself. And on the other side, we have three being modulated by four, and then we have number four being modulated by six and by five. Okay, so it would then look like this. All right, and this would then be a great time to maybe save this and call it like DX715. That way you know you're kind of hearkening back to the original and using that as a good starting place. Definitely something um, to experiment with if you're struggling uh, creating your own patches and sort of setting up some of these modulation schemes. Great to work from a template, and you can almost always get something really interesting at the end. And last, but certainly not least, it is worth pointing out that the FM8 can also import classic DX7 sounds, and you can just search for like FM8 DX7 presets, and you'll find a lot of stuff for free um, and some things that you can also pay for, but I would recommend not paying for them because they are out there for free if you can uh, find them. So here's a bank with some pretty uh, popular and famous sounds from the DX7. We have here like the Rhodes. <laughs> You can hear this person's taking some extra liberties and it sounds like put some effects on here. Yeah, they've added a chorus and delay to that one. So taking the DX7 and upgrading it, have things like strings. Or we can go into this first folder here of DX7 sounds. And let's just grab something like, uh, we'll try the brass ones out. 
So these ones have not been effect processed. The Celeste. This is sort of that classic DX7 sound. And so I'm pretty sure in this folder they've grabbed some of the real classic ones like the piano sounds. Again, no effects. So somehow on the release, it's kind of all a little bit different. So you can hear it kind of fading away, some of those upper harmonics dying down. So that sounds like it's releasing. So yeah, just thought I would share that with you. Uh, always worth exploring the presets in your FM instrument. And then if you want to dig real deep, you can go in and figure out how exactly they set that up. So we see that F and D are acting as carriers here. You can see that difference in the envelope. If we go into these envelopes here, we'd be able to um, open them up and kind of see the differences and how they're able to then uh, generate the sound. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed FM synthesis. It's a lot of fun, but I've often found that working with presets uh, can, can maybe be a little bit more practical, at least for the common man like myself.